Okay, so we've we've, uh, we've found, we've got the answer to there, and we're at Patience Kershaw, and I was saying, when I first read the poem, I did not know what that meant. And um, we're going to take some time away from the poem. I googled it, and I found her, but this poem was written at a time before Google. I think you would work out, so it tells you there, you'd find out what a hurrier was, and you'd realise that she was one of them. I think but um, it was very interesting to be to live in the internet age and I could go and find her over here so oh yes oh I can't do it there I'm just gonna have to go bear with us people watching the video um, SharePoint Tony and all the way down here, I have click here for Patience Kershaw. So, Victorian Web, do people know this website? I think it's quite popular for history. It's quite small for you. Um, what's happened is all these mines have been all open. I, I did it for my GCSE, which was called an O-level then. And children were working down there. I mean, four-year-old children. And people were working down there 16 hours a day. With um, they had Sunday off, and with a half day off a year, and they people were dying left, right, and centre. They had terrible diseases from inhaling um, coal dust and other noxious gases running out of um, water. They would quite often be up to their knees or higher in water. They'd spend all day unable to stand up because the mine was too um, small. I mean, it's an absolute nightmare, isn't it? And so the government said, yeah, yeah, we better look into this. And they um, sent, look, it says here, a mine commission. I can't see where I can see now. It's the Ashby Mine Commission. Oh, yeah, Ashley's Mines Commission. Let's go and find out what's going on in these mines. It was a similar story in early factories. We're a rubbish species, really. We have to be forced to look after each other, I feel. Um, and, and it was absolutely atrocious. And I can remember learning all these, um, you know, this is what you do for, for O-levels. I learned all these laws off by heart. And there was law after law saying the minimum age is four, the minimum age is five, the minimum age is still five, the maximum number of hours you can work is 14. And I didn't think about it. I just learned them off by heart. And then as, when I got a bit older, I thought, really? <laughs> you know, it kind of really hit me. I just needed it for my O-level. That's all I cared about. But really amazing what we did to people. And you don't hear about it much. Who has done it in history? Well, that's good. Absolutely nobody. Um, and isn't that an interesting decision of our country? But most, a lot of people can name the six wives of Henry VIII, but not this kind of stuff, um, which is important to know. So here's what the first, they got an eight-year-old in to talk to the commission, a little eight-year-old. I'm a trapper in the Gorber pit. It does tire me, but I have to trap without a light and I'm scared. I go home at four and sometimes half three in the morning and come out at five and half past, not two hours later, like 14 hours later. I never go to sleep. Sometimes I sing when I've light, but not in the dark. I dare not sing then. I don't like being in the pit. I'm very sleepy when I go sometimes in the morning. I go to Sunday schools and read reading made easy. So this is then the commission saying she knows her letters, can read little words. They teach me to pray. She repeated the Lord's Prayer, not very perfectly, and ran on with the following edition. God bless my mother and father and sister and brother, uncles and aunts and cousins and everybody else. And God bless me and make me a good servant. Amen. I've heard tell of Jesus many a time. I don't know why he came on earth, I'm sure. And I don't know why he died, but he had stones for his head to rest on. I would like to be at school far better than in the pit. So an eight-year-old in the dark, in a hole in the ground of many hundred meters depth all day and no school that's what this country is like um then then you've got somebody who makes the money so you that's your life and the person selling the coal has an amazing lifestyle and what Karl Marx said was people won't put up with that people just won't accept it they're doing the mining and they're living in these horrendous conditions and with these terrible illnesses and the people who make the money for it are on a yacht, massive houses, balls, 
huge dinners. They, people just won't accept it. And he said there would be a revolution. He didn't call for a revolution so much as say is there will be one. People just won't put up with it. But was he wrong? Mm, didn't seem to happen. It's in China at the moment. Will they rebel? Will they say, no, stop it, not doing it? Um, anyway, very interesting. So um, here's a 12-year-old. She works on mother's account as father's been dead two years. Mother bides at home. She's troubled with bad breath. What's that? And is very weak in her body from early labor. I'm wrought with sister and brother. It's very sore work. I cannot say how many rakes or journeys I make from the pit's bottom up to the wall face. This is before lifts. People had to climb ladders. It was, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, she thinks about 30 on 25 on the average. The distance varies from 100 to 250 fathom. I don't know how big that is. I carry about 100 weight and a quarter on my back. So you climb up the ladder with the stuff on your back. People died a lot. Um, I have to stoop much and creep through water, which is frequently up to the calves of my legs. When first down, fell frequently asleep while waiting for coal from heat and fatigue. Absolutely boiling, people throwing their clothes off. I do not like the work, nor do the lasses, but they're made to like it. When the weather's warm, there's difficulty in breathing and frequently the lights go out. What does it mean if the lights go out? Which is a candle. It does, but why have the lights gone out? It's going to require knowledge of chemistry. Yeah. No oxygen. Is that what you said, Sarah? Yeah, no oxygen. So you need oxygen to buzz. If the lights go out, you've got to get out of there. There's just hardly any oxygen in the air. Have you heard about canaries in a coal mine? Yeah, the canaries will die. If it's got um, poison gases, the canaries die and you've got a head. Um, so people are dying all the time of these things. Um, so have a look here. Look, there she is. Patience Kershaw. So she's aged 17 here, but I think in the poem she's 14. People listening, I'm going to go to the end of Patience Kershaw and then um, I'll stop this video. So presumably, <laughs> presumably Patience Ker the, um, Harrison read this, do you think? And then he's, it's caused him to write a poem about it. My father's been dead about a year. My mother is living and has 10 children, five lads and five lasses. The oldest is about 30, the youngest is four. Three lasses go to mill. The lads are all colliers, that's miners. Two getters and three hurriers. One lives at home and does nothing. Mother does not, but look after home. All my sisters have been hurriers, but three went to the mill. So I think a hurrier is, can you hear it in the word, someone who gets the coal, someone's got the coal, the getters have got the coal, and the hurriers hurry it up to the surface and they're carriers, if you like. Um, I never went to day school. I go to Sunday school. Oh, no, hang on a minute. All my sisters have been hurriers, but three went to the mill. Alice went because her legs swelled from hurrying in cold water when she was hot. I never went to day school. I go to Sunday school, but I cannot read or write. I go to pit at five in the morning and come out at five in the evening. I get my breakfast of porridge and milk first. I take my dinner with me, a cake, and eat it as I go. I think it's a cake of bread. I don't think it's what we mean. It's not like a fancy cake. Um, I do not stop or rest any time for the purpose. I get nothing else till I, come, till I get home. Then I have potatoes and meat, not everyday meat. I hurry in the clothes I've now got on, trousers and ragged jacket. The ball placed on my head is made by thrusting the corves. My legs have never swelled, but sisters did when they went to mill. I, I hurry the corves a mile and more underground. A mile. Um, and back. They weigh 300 weight. I, I hurry 11 a day. I wear a belt and chain at the workings to get the corves out. The getters that I work for are naked except their caps. They pull off all their clothes. I see them at work when I go up. Sometimes they beat me if I'm not quick enough. Like they don't want some girl looking at them naked, but they just can't bear having their clothes on from the heat. Um, they beat me if I'm not quick enough with their hands. They strike me upon my back. The boys take liberty with me, and sometimes they pull me about. So she's one, she's one girl, all these naked men around her, and take liberties is sexual. Um, I'm the only girl in the pit. There are about 20 boys and 15 men. All the men are naked. I'd rather work in a mill than in a pit. 
This girl is an ignorant, filthy, ragged and deplorable looking object and such a one as the uncivilised natives of the prairies would be shocked to look upon. So just talk to the person next to you. Do you know about this or do you know anything? Are you shocked? What are you thinking about what's happening to in, in this country? Um, <laughs>